Dr. Green, what would you say are some of the best leadership practices that workplace leaders can follow to help mitigate this kind of transitional conflict? Oh, sure. Yeah. And a lot of the, the, the content that's already been said has been really, really, really uh, important aspects to remember as we make this transition. Um, but some of the things that I, I like to, to kind of think of, especially as it relates to just this conflict thing, how to mitigate the conflict, because regardless of a transition or wherever you are, conflict is always going to be a constant. And I think Jeremy made a great point by saying that, yeah, the idea that the people have not been around each other as much because they maybe have been at home, um, it has kind of dissolved the, the, the tension, but it's still going to occur. Um, but I think some, some good practices as a leader um, that I think are really good to follow is just, first off, act responsibly. You know, when you're a leader, you have to face the conflict and you have to really just take the ownership of it as the leader, because if you don't take it on, if you don't act responsibly, then you run the risk of just not even being respected anymore. And so first things first is that you have to own it. You have to be the leader and take the, the responsibility of, of, of uh, actually acting on the conflict. And then next, just kind of di diagnosing the actual conflict. What is the problem? What are the things that people are having issues with with each other? And um, by doing this, by ensuring what it is, um, you are you know, really just making it known that you're wanting to get to the bottom of things. And if you wait too long, then other people will feel very hesitant about coming to you about making any type of, of issues about the conflict. Because if they saw that Susie and uh, Judy were having conflict and they had it for a duration of years, then if someone else has an issue, then they're gonna be very hesitant about coming to that leader to handle it because they never handled the, the original issue or other issues that have happened for a very, very long period of time. Um, and then also you wanna be able to maintain those boundaries uh, to be able to make sure that you are um, possessing enough self-awareness to keep them from crossing the lines and making sure that having those boundaries will assist other people in establishing standards to prevent further conflict. Um, next, respect the differences because of course they're going to be there. That's why the conflict is there. Um, but when you are respecting both sides, um, you're gonna be able to just capture both sides of, of, the, of the person or the employee. Um, they're gonna understand that you understand them and they're going to feel more comfortable about you as a leader taking on the, um, the, the, the brunt of this particular issue. And then lastly, I mean, as a life coach, I'm all about setting goals, right? So as a, a leader, you have to go in and try to set a goal for this particular conflict. What are we wanting to get out of the situation? Where are we wanting to be? So that we can move on and we can you know, think strategically on how we can work to remedy this issue and you know, so that things will not go out of whack again. They probably will, but you know, in an effort to be strategic and to be goal-driven, you know, have some things in place that will say, okay, this is where we want to be, and then we'll move step by step by step in order to get to where we want to be, where both sides are being cordial, both sides are being heard, both sides are being respected. And so I think that those are some really good takeaways that leaders can really. Uh, take ownership to. Like I said, the other content that's been said, the transparency, um, the, the giving assessments, all those things are really good tools to also incorporate when you're a leader and, and tasked with the responsibility of dealing with conflict in this really, really crucial time. 